Hello everyone, and welcome to another Resolve tutorial. So today's just going to be kind of a quick tip on getting things from Blender, which is a 3D animation software rendering kind of Swiss army knife. It's an incredibly powerful program, and it's free and open source, and I highly recommend it if you want to get into um, 3D rendering or visual effects or anything like that. Um, and we're going to talk about getting things from that into Resolve. So if you're just doing like a full-on animation or even just a CG still, I definitely would recommend Resolve for just editing stills. Uh, but it can be done. I've done it, but that's beside the point. Let's get uh, right into it. So if we go into Blender here, this is basically the actual project file itself. Uh, you can really see just how much those displacement map textures uh, are doing to this image. If we just give it a second to render here. But yeah, you can really see just how powerful displacement textures can be and just PBR rendering in general. Um, and I got these textures from textures.com, so I'll leave a link in the description to these individual textures themselves if you ever feel like using them. Uh, but yeah. So the way that I used to export from Blender is, you know, I would just do what everyone else does, render out the animation as individual frames, but I would export them as uh, PNG files. And I would do RGB, maybe RGB alpha, if I need that, you know, alpha channel for whatever reason, uh, and it's 16, 16 bits per channel, and then zero, zero percent compression. Now this is a, it's a perfectly fine workflow to use, especially if you're working with, uh, Going to, going to the color management here, if you're working with Blender's Filmic Log Color Space, which is basically their default kind of log profile, and it has like an absolutely monstrous amount of dynamic range. Like I'd say, I believe I heard somewhere it's like almost 20 stops, which is completely ridiculous. And it gives that gives you so much potential to actually uh, color grade to your heart's content. But it is a little tricky if you're trying to match it with footage that you shot with a real life camera. So an Ari Alexa, or a Blackmagic camera or Sony camera or anything like that, uh, it's going to be difficult to get this to match with that, unless you have a lot of time on your hands. So the way that I do things now, and the way that most of the industry does it to uh, the best of my knowledge, is I render out OpenEXR frames. And of course, similar, I just use RGB if I don't need the alpha channel, because it, that saves a ton of data. And you have two options here, you have float half and float full. Now float full gives you 32 bits of color information per channel. And that's great if you're just doing uh, a single still. That gives you plenty to work with, but it is a lot of data if you have a full-on animation. So I just go with 16-bit uh, color channels, which is eight more than enough for what you need, especially if you're used to coloring maybe like at most 12, 14, maybe even 16-bit uh, red footage uh, or any sort of raw footage like that. So once I have those, I'm not going to render this cell out for you because I already have it done. Uh, we go to Resolve here. And then we'll hop into the uh, media pool here and go to where we have our frames rendered. And you'll see here, you know, it automatically combines all the frames for us, which is great. But you'll notice it's very dark. And that's because OpenEXR doesn't have any gamma curve applied to it. This is straight up a linear gamma curve. It's, it's essentially a one-to-one -one representation of the color data itself without any curve applied. Uh, so it looks weird to our human minds, but this is basically how computers see uh, color information. And so the way we actually get it to something that we can work with is we bring it into our media pool here and you can apply uh, a LUT to it uh, at any point in the chain here, but I just prefer to get it right out of the gate right here in the media pool. So I just right click, go to 3D LUT, and then under VFX IO, you'll see all of these options to convert from a linear gamma curve to just any log curve or rec 709 curve that you can think of. Uh, so we get options to convert it to RE log C, Blackmagic Film, uh, Rec 709 or even sRGB if this is basically Blender's default color space So if you just want to want to see exactly what you're seeing in the Blender viewport just slap this on But for our purposes what I really like to work with is uh, RE log C just because I have a fair bit of experience Color grading uh, RE log C so I'm very used to this gamma curve and this kind of color space here So this makes it very 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 familiar to me as a colorist And so we just take this and then we can import it into our timeline here so once we have that in our timeline, we can just go to the color tab here and we can grade it just like we're grading any other piece of footage. Um, and it's, like I said, it's very similar to RE log C and it's not a, a perfect recreation. It's not gonna be like you're grading Alexa footage, but it is a very similar gamma curve and it's the exact same color space. So it is going to be a very familiar color grading experience if you're very used to that kind of footage. All right, thanks for watching. Uh, this has been a really fun tutorial to make just cause I've been on kind of a blender kick recently, been watching a lot of Pixar films. So I was like, I can do that. So yeah, uh, if you liked the video, leave a like. And if you have any comments or suggestions for future videos or questions on anything you've seen today, uh, just go ahead and leave a comment and uh, yeah. 
Thanks for watching.